Saludos. Today I am being joined by Lee from Heart Peace Healing to talk about the harm of white spiritual communities. And this is a conversation that is long overdue, that really needs attention for the dismantling to happen. Saludos, saludos. Thank you for joining us. Lee will join us here in a few minutes. So when you are on, Lee, just request to join us and we'll have you and begin this conversation. I want to thank all of you for being here. I don't know if I'll be able to share this live afterwards. I'm being blocked from sharing. So thank you for joining us live. And thank you for your courage in being here for this conversation, the harm of white spiritual communities and the sacred responsibility that white spiritual seekers and healers have. I see Lee here. See her joining. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you for being here. Hi. Hello. <laughs> good to see you. Yes, so good to see you. Thank you for having this conversation. Um, I want to give people a little bit of background. We um, have been in connection for about a year and a half now. And you are a beloved friend and also a student. You also have... Um, taken these teachings and really are embodying them. So I want to say that because um, I feel like you are someone who is in integrity uh, with this work. And so um, wanted to say that. I also wanted to say that we both have had experienced harm um, from white spiritual community. So the things that we'll be sharing today are related to the teachings that I hold um, Lee being a student, Lee also experiencing just as I have harm in white spiritual communities. And so I think one of the things we wanted to illuminate is that harm is being done to Black Indigenous people of color, but also to all people, to white bodied people too, when this work, decolonial healing work and learning is not done. So that is sort of the, our main intentions for today. We also wanted to say that we really pray for you to receive this with your heart, mm -hmm. that we are not here to shame or to judge because we have all learned from this harmful paradigm. And so wanting to say that, right? Like we hope that you can receive this so that you can begin to do your part, right? Because this work is really not something that you can do with your mind, right? Or that you can just like read the books or the post and share the post. This is something you have to experience. The dismantling needs to happen through you as a white bodied person. And so really sharing those prayers, those intentions and even maybe if it feels aligned, inviting you here to take a deep breath and ground your energy and begin to maybe even drop into your heart, out of your mind and into your heart to receive this conversation and what comes through. Thank you. So Lee, I wonder if you would like to share with folks a little bit about you and the work you do for those that are just meeting you. Um, yes, thank you so much for having me. Um, I align with everything you shared as an introduction. Um, I am a healing practitioner and I work with people mostly one-on-one -on -one in healing sessions that are very focused on the person coming to the session and the, that's a lot of heart, heart centered, mm -hmm. um, relational healing. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of my passion and the way that I share this work um, has actually been informed from working with you and also from my journey of um, looking within 
at the mm -hmm. harm that I experienced, um, mm -hmm. you know, looking at my part mm -hmm. and also, you know, nurturing and caring for myself along the way. So it's kind of, it's, you know, the topic is so, so important to me. Mm -hmm. So I have, um, I have a background in creativity and yoga. So those are the earlier years like that I got into healing work and I, I have gifts to, to share, um, in, to share in suffering with others in a non-judgmental way. Yes. And that has really led me forward to take a lot of trainings. Mm -hmm. And so I have had a lot of different experiences in the trainings. Mm -hmm. So again, that connects with, with the topic today too. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm so grateful that our paths have crossed and mm -hmm. I'm grateful to you today. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lee. Thank you for sharing that. I also want to say that what I love about you is your your really heart centeredness and also your trust and communication with the unseen world. And so I say those things because that is really also the heart of my work. I know that a lot of people like see the decolonial piece and I think because it does create su such a reaction in people like that's the only thing that they see but my work is is really about healing and about getting you know to our true divine selves you know really guiding you out of the old paradigm to to really be able to make space for your heart for your gifts for you to be able to communicate with the earth and the unseen and and those are the things I so love. And so um, I wanted to, to illuminate those pieces here today. So thank you, Lee, for, for being here and just who you are and, and all the gifts you carry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's start first with, and, and you've already kind of brought this in about like the harm right, that you've experienced, that we experienced together. So to give people a little bit of background, I, um, what, this was maybe, it began in 20, like maybe three years ago or so. Mm -hmm. And um, we were learning from a, and this is important, a white spiritual teacher who identifies as being empathic. And so I think that those things are important to, to describe because often, and maybe this is part of our own unlearning and journey, but when we hear spiritual, when we hear empathic, we automatically assume that that's safe, right? Like that I'm going to receive healing here and it's going to be safe. And Actually, now that I say that out loud, I don't, I don't know that our expectations were misplaced. You know, I think there is a responsibility when you show up as a spiritual teacher and when you are saying that you're an empathic spiritual teacher, I think that comes with responsibility. I think it is important to be in integrity and um, it's, it's, there is an ethical piece to this work that is often missed, you know? And so there's a few like threads and layers, you know, I think that this, the person that we learn from, unfortunately, you know, they definitely need to do this decolonial work, right? Mm -hmm. But also I think deeper work as well of like, uh, not show, you know, and this is connected to the colonial paradigm, not showing up in authoritative ways, mm -hmm. um, not showing up in, I want to say even aggressive ways, you know, so this is like colonial patriarchal conditioning that maybe they don't see. Um, and this is the heart of this conversation. And so I wonder if you'd like to add to that. Mm, sure. Um, it's so, there's so many things. Um, mm -hmm. so there's so many things that, that I could share. Um, I, I'd love to say, to mention that, um, when people, myself included, when we, when I step forward towards working with a spiritual 
person, a spiritual healer, um, or even an empathic teacher that I chose to work with, um, there is a relational holding that I'm seeking, whether or not I'm aware of it or not. And there's a vulnerability that comes with a person seeking healing or help or um, uh, a release from suffering or, you know, knowing, you know, or a deeper connection with self. And my experience, you know, you know, with this teacher, this white body teacher that we're talking about, and then other white body teachers that I've had as well, in different ways, but there's a very, um, very focused on the business model and fitting people into it. And mm -hmm. there's something that is disconnected there, um, a lack of alignment. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, you mentioned the body and heart and earth. So those medicines being connected to those is so important. And it is really different. The mm -hmm. relational holding is different from that. Yes. And I found for myself that I wasn't able to connect with myself in the way that I needed when the space was focused on the business model or when there was a, um, a weightiness to the exchange that was more transactional mm -hmm. and the hierarchy and rigidity and that disconnection, you know, and thinking of this conversation with you, you know, um, the disconnection, like manipulative business models. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If something, if the truth is manipulated and there's a relational commitment around that, there's sort of like a moving, there's like a moving that, you, that one has to do to maintain whatever's not being connected or clear or shown mm -hmm. in that manipulation. And so that that um i hope this isn't too abstract but that that aspect of those containers and those relationships for me as a client as a student made it so that i was confused and mm -hmm. not able to do the deeper work in connection with myself yeah and when i if i confronted it or asked questions a lot of times there wasn't accountability mm -hmm. and my questions didn't inform that space in a generative way and a curious way so I think that's a lot <laughs> mm -hmm, but that's, yeah. kind of, that's a big part of how I experienced it yes thank you Lee and so there's so many layers there right and we want to say like this is such a layered conversation we and we are just like opening it today and maybe we will continue these conversations because there are so many layers and all of what you have said is I, I so agree with, you know, I think, unfortunately, we witness especially and, and, you know, we're talking about white bodied people specifically, but yes, all people do it. Um, it is not just white bodied people, but why we are focusing or why I focus and this container that I offer is for white bodied people is because they do have privileges. They do have resources, they, the access to resources if they don't have the resources themselves to create a massive shift, to create a paradigm shift. So that is why I am focusing. I'm not saying you are evil or you are bad. I'm not saying any of those things. I'm saying in this paradigm, you are unjustly granted privileges and resources. So when you know that now you can make a choice to to not collude right to create new ways right to to not show up in predatory ways to not show up in manipulative ways right and all this pieces that you speak about you know about how it is uh, spirituality and healing i call it capitalist spirituality right mainstream spirituality new age spirituality mainstream wellness it has become so like monetized right and there is there are so many layers of of un, there's so many unethical practices that we see that have become normalized right and i want to be clear and say 
that I hold anti-capitalist values. I know you do as well, Lee. And that doesn't mean that you don't make money, right? Like that doesn't mean, like that's not what that means. Um, if you are more interested in anti-capitalist work, I want to um, encourage you to learn from Toy Smith at Toy Marie here on Instagram, who I have learned from. Um, and so, but I want to be clear and say that's not what that means. When someone says I'm anti-capitalist, I'm against manipulative practices, um, I'm against capitalist practices, it doesn't mean you, you don't need to make money. Unfortunately, we do live in these systems. Unfortunately, that is the current exchange, but there is a way that you can show up in integrity, that you can show up in ethical ways, right? Your business can grow slowly, right? Like it's, and, and that's the case for me. I know that's the case for you as well, Lee. Um, to not be exploitive of other people, to not be exploitive of yourself, to not try to manipulate people into buying from you, right? Like if, and I think this is what we also wanted to communicate or, or what I feel really strongly about. And I know that you do too, Lee, because we've had so many conversations about this, but like if your work is truly about healing, if you're truly really, it, your work truly is about accessing the divine and spirit, you don't need to manipulate people into that, right? Like you don't need to engage in predatory ways, right? If, you're, if your work is, is divine and true, you don't need to show up in predatory ways. And I think that a lot of people either do that because um, there's internal work that they need to do, right? But also I think a lot of people do that because it's been so normalized. Like it's the, it's the accepted model of how to hold a business. And so this is where it gets to the decolonial work, right? Of like, let's unlearn these harmful ways, right? And not just in your business, but in your own life, right? Because to be really honest, I thought about this this morning as, as I was getting ready and meditating for our talk. If my, if my offering was decolonizing your business or something like that, there would be more people that would join because it's about you making money. But that would, for me, you know, that would be, maybe that's like a future offering. I don't know, I'm not really interested in that right now. But it's, it's out of integrity if you yourself don't do the work, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be because you would, you would maybe in, in, in theory take a decolonizing business class, but if you don't do the work yourself, and learning yourself, living your life in a different way, you would still show up that way when, you know, later on down the line or in ways that you're not consciously aware of. Yeah. And so I'm just really making space. I'm seeing here comments and we're talking about the ethics, right? Of, of healing, the ethics of being a spiritual guide the ethics of offering healing to people, right? And and the I love what you said about like the vulnerability that people come with, you know, the the space holding that they need, right? Like that we really need to honor the trust that people place in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think especially as white bodied spiritual seekers spiritual guides, therapists, right? Um, healing practitioners, there is a responsibility that you have to do your own dismantling from the colonial paradigm to truly be able to hold space for people in a way that doesn't collude with the colonial paradigm. And so I'm wondering, Lee, if you would like to share maybe like what you learned and how that has helped you and how you hold space for people or, or even for yourself, how it's allowed you to show up differently, show up in, in right relationship. Mm -hmm. Sure. 
Sure. Um, integrity is very important to me. And I really appreciate that you talk a lot about that. So I think I know I sense what I say will be connected to me leaning into that again and again. Um, yes. So I think I say I think a lot, but really what I want to share is what I know and what my heart, what my heart wants to speak. Um, slowing down, going mm -hmm. slower um, has been something that I've learned. Um, there's a part of me, um, I'm a white bodied person and I work with this ongoing when I'm with clients or in my personal life, I do experience an inner urgency to know an answer, to solve mm -hmm. a problem, to do something quickly. Um, definitely something that I'm unlearning. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also offering myself compassion and trust that I can make mistakes and talk about them and look within if someone mm -hmm. confronts me on something that maybe I've harmed someone or mm -hmm. I could do something that I'm not conscious of mm -hmm. um, and offer myself compassion rather than judgment or harshness. Yes. Um, and in that way, be real. So I can be real, I can be human, and I can make a mistake and, you know, not lean on that as like an excuse, but um, to lead with that realness, so that people that I work with, I don't treat them like they're less than or um, it's an exchange. And we share during the sessions, and there's a real sharing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's so important. Um, to me and you know i think another thing i learned too is to really look within my own shadow mm -hmm. um what you know that it's not about the other um mm -hmm. even if i think it is and it might be something that comes up about someone else um but i'm learning really to look within about like where does that where does that thread go within me mm -hmm. that i can connect with myself on that yes um and also humility is something so mm -hmm. huge from that I learned from working with you that mm -hmm. I don't always know. And I can be okay with not knowing and mm -hmm. I can also share that and that can be okay. And um, I'm not, you know, I'm not, it's not my role to lead this work. Mm -hmm. However, I do have responsibilities and I do have a role. There are things that I can do. Yes. Um, and there's so much more for me to learn. And I look forward to being a student with you again in the future because mm -hmm. there's so much more. Mm -hmm. So so those are a few things. Um, yeah. 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 Thank you for that, Lee. And I, I wanna say that like these are words, right? And But I trust that, that those that are meant to do this deeper work, those that understand that you're already feeling the call. Like I know that there's something missing in, in my work. I know there's something missing in my spiritual journey. I, I, you know, I see the injustice and I also know that there's something that I need to change within myself, right? And so I'm trusting that call. I'm trusting what you already feel. And we wanted to have this conversation to more really like illuminate what and really dismantle what is normalized in white spiritual communities. And I love what you shared, you know, and one of the things that I that I tell people is really like this container is also about like a deeper sense of spirituality, you know, and, and rehumanizing. Because one of the things that I've seen, you know, after a year of doing this work with white people is that they have been so programmed to to show up in these, you know, even even if they are beautiful people and loving people, they have been conditioned to show up in authoritative ways, right? Like conditioned to uphold these harmful practices. So like what you identified in the sense of urgency, I have to know everything, right? Like I, I have to show up as if I um, am, you know, a, a it, like a leader, I want to say like an all-knowing leader, an all-knowing guide, right? And like the the uncomfortable truth there is that people are rewarded for that, right? Mm -hmm. 
So that's where the, the integrity comes in. I know that this is wrong, and I may be rewarded if I show up in this way, but if I truly want to show up in integrity and in right relationship, if I truly want to contribute to a new and better world, I need to show up differently. So I do need to slow down. I do need to constantly reflect in how I'm showing up in my work, in my life, and, and allowing that to like be a process, a journey, right? Like mm -hmm. um, that that will be revealed to me over time that, that, you know, and it's not like Dr. Rocio says this and like, I'm not going to be constantly hovering over you and telling you this, like these are teachings and then you like I trust you and I trust your guides and your inner wisdom and I know that it will continue to be revealed to you so I think there's also the piece there of like you know beginning to trust yourself again you know because we're so conditioned to not to to, to you use this a lot to abandon ourselves right mm. to abandon ourselves and to be in allegiance to the colonial capitalist patriarchy. And we call it a, having a career, right? Like, and we call it being professional and we call it being successful, right? But for me, those are, it is showing up in colonial capitalist patriarchal ways, right? So it's this work of rehumanizing and you and, and learning and healing yourself first, right? Healing yourself first. And I wonder like, if there are like aspects of those healing, that healing that you received um, from this work that has allowed you to show up um, in, in maybe more integrity or maybe even more in, in, in deeper healing ways. I wonder if there, there, if you can speak to the healing that you've received too. Yes, I can. Um, I wanted to, yeah, when you bring up trust, I, I know that trust was a big part of my healing from, from working with you and being mm -hmm. your student. Um, and it is trust, there was layers to it. Um, mm -hmm. You, in one context, encouraged the group to trust one another. Mm -hmm. And there was such a beautiful way that landed for me. And you know, to be honest, I don't know if anyone has ever said that to me, mm -hmm. trust one another. And I know it's words and I know it's, um, it's words, but it's, it landed really in my, in my body and my system and also trusting, um, the non-physical and the non-physical energy. Um, there's trust with self in there as well. Yes. Um, but the, there's a lot of threads that weave together in it for me because the trusting of the non-physical is slower mm -hmm. there's not uh there's spaciousness and slowness and the way that you led the experience was so tender and you honored the experience and the way that you shared with us um as sacred and that was something that came through to me from you and the non-physical and that's something that i can say but for me, it's, it can't really translate. It's an experience. Yes. And I continue to relax into trust, especially mm -hmm. with the non-physical because, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm unlearning my lack of trust of that. And my, you know, my, me being cut off from that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's so important to me personally and it's also important to me when I work with others so that's a gift that I receive from you as a person as my teacher mm -hmm. that then helps me teach other people mm -hmm. and I that's another part of working with you that's so it's invaluable because it's it's a flow it goes through and it like generates up mm -hmm. and so there's not the uh it's hard to put into words but yes makes sense and yes it's generative it's mm -hmm. generative. and the way that you share it from body from earth body and heart mm -hmm. like it has that generative quality to it there's not a um you know like a rigid holding mm -hmm. you know yes.
the trust is important because mm -hmm. it's a lot of the work is beyond me. And I know we're yes. here and we're here to do human work as well, mm -hmm. but both are so important. Yes. Thank you for saying that, Lee, that I receive your words and thank you for seeing all of the layers of the work. Um, this work is sacred to me. And I know that um, a lot of what is out there for white bodied people, not that it is not important, but it's, it's, um, I think it often keeps white people stuck and, and in the loop of guilt and shame. And part of that is important, you know, these are guilt and shame are there to teach you something, to teach you where you're out of alignment, where you're out of integrity. And the way that the work is intellectualized or it is um, done with contempt for white people, even though like I so get why, because of all the wounds, because of our colonial histories, that also as a medicine woman, and I'm grateful for my teachers for allowing me to see this because I didn't see it before. So I'm grateful to Don Alejandro Apasa and Marie Lucien who helped me to see the, the bigger picture, to help me to zoom out that, um, that though holding the, you know, holding contempt for white people, even though there are times that I still get angry and frustrated because I'm human, that when we do the work in that way, when we do healing in that way, any learning in that way, that it will, it will not like ripple out, it will not truly be healing, right? Like people won't receive that. It won't create the paradigm that we want, a new paradigm. We're, we're, we're just gonna revert back to the old paradigm, right? Because we're gonna shame and judge white people and they're gonna feel horrible about themselves. And then they're gonna bury their head in the sand or go back to sleep or feel overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. And that keeps them stuck, right? Like in this, kind of purgatory state. Mm -hmm. And so if, if we truly want change, embodied change, change that is really grounded in earth and heart and spirit, right? Like that is multidimensional, then that work needs to be held differently. So thank you for seeing all of those layers. And, and thank you for also reflecting like the slowness of it, like the sacredness of it. And, and I also want to speak here to like the, you know, why this, why I charge what I charge, because what is, what the do, the work that I do with people is only one layer. And it, it takes so much to be able to hold that work, to be able to prepare myself to hold compassionately all, all the prayers and all this, like the, the work that I need to do to show up as a clear vessel um, so that I don't inflict my wounds, right? Or, or my frustration or my anger. And, and to hold that in all of these layers, in multidimensional layers, it takes a lot, you know? And I don't always want to be doing that, to be honest, because it is so heavy. And so I know that a lot of, I, I want to like be transparent and, and, and say, like, I know a lot of people are say, this is really expensive and it is. And also I know that it is so worth it and it can change your life. And, you know, I offer so much free education as well because I believe in accessibility and also, this is a work that I do to provide for my family. And my family and I deserve to be well also. And it took me a long time to get to that place because I did have many inflicted money wounds and doing, you know, the work in a quote unquote accessible way, but then exploiting myself. And so I just want to be transparent about all of that. I do what I can to make this work as accessible as possible. And also I need to honor myself and my family. And the reason why it is at that price point is because of all of these layers, because it is not easy. It would be easier to just teach you and to do it in an intellectual way 
and more people can quote unquote access it. But I don't know that the same transformation would be possible, right? Like it does need to integrate the energetics, the somatics, the ancestral work, like all of that, you know? And so I just want to be, you know, clear and transparent about that as well. So I'm just taking a deep breath with all of that because um, like the many conversations are still hard for me and I'm still like healing from all of that too. Um, so I really want to invite, um, you know, those that are really resonating with what we're sharing to, to really honor the calling that you're feeling, right? And what I want to say is that what I witness a lot of white bodied people that have done anti-racism work is that like they tend to point the finger at other white people, you know, and, and not look within, you know, and I want to say that you do that so beautifully, Lee, is that you look within, that you are willing to face the shadows. And part of that is from the, some of the teachings that you've received from me, some of the teachings that you've received from others, but it really is also about who you are as a person, that you are in integrity, that you work to be in right relationship. So I, those are the people that I'm calling in because I can do all these things and it won't land if this is not who you are. These are not your intentions. If you are not willing to to take those teachings, those seeds, and cultivate them within yourself, and so, I I wonder if if there's more that you that you want to add there about like what you witness amongst white white healers and white spiritual teachers or or white people that have done anti-racist work of like this finger pointing and like you know, you're the one that needs to do the work and, and not looking within self. Yes, um, absolutely. Um, there's like two things I want to, I would love to share. Um, I, I have experienced with um, white bodied spiritual teachers um, on a couple different occasions when I inquired to them about something um, and it wasn't, it wasn't heavily confrontational. Um, uh, one, one actually was in a woman's group that was led by a white bodied spiritual uh, healer. And um, my, I'll give an example. The example in that context was, I didn't feel connected to the group. Mm. And it was put back on me. I don't, I mm. hope this is a good example for what you're yes, asking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because rather than there being like a dialogue or support for me to actually get curious about, yeah. well, what's happening? You know, like what's, what are the facts? What's the yes. perception? What's, what's in my body? What's my history? You know, like what's happening in the present, you know, the work, like the work that can be done. Yes. More that um, it was more put on, it, it wasn't invited like that. There wasn't yes. an open dialogue and it was put back on me mm -hmm. as being my issue. Mm -hmm. or, or in another context, um, different example, you know, I was encouraged to do more, to, to buy more healing sessions. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just, it wasn't really engaged. And I have, for example, a different example is I have um, um, a white bodied, um, spiritual teacher who I work with and she does do decolonial work and she does divest. And um, when I have asked her questions or given her feedback, it's a completely different exchange where mm -hmm. she actually hears what I'm saying and listens and, mm -hmm. and, and allows it to possibly inform what she does. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's more of a, a living relational experience yes. as opposed to you know, essentially me being shut down and there's no accountability. Mm -hmm. um, and what a, what a missed opportunity yes. for curiosity and exploration and the possibility of making it better. Yes. Um, I'd love to just add one more part. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 
It's a little bit different, but it's, it's about working with you. Um, that, was, that is so invaluable to me. I had done a couple trainings um, with, with white bodied spiritual leaders or, or facilitators, healers that um, do, do not, as far as I know, do decolonial work. And I was presented very much with like, there's only one way to, mm -hmm. to do this work mm -hmm. in terms of business model. It was very specific, like there's only one way to actually do this. Mm -hmm. And it was extremely manipulative what I was being presented. And it was very overwhelming for me. And I, uh, that was a couple years ago and I was really, I, I struggled in that confusion. Mm -hmm. And so working with you has rooted me in a completely new experience. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have that experience otherwise. And now I can tell, I can sense, and I just know if a white bodied spiritual teacher or leader is, is working with BIPOC and mm -hmm. doing colonial work. There's a yes. difference that I can see and I can tell. Yes. And I am white bodied and I'm not here to, to shame or to point fingers. It's mm -hmm. just not for me anymore. Yes. I don't I work with, with white bodied people who are not doing this work. And it's, I just, I'm not able to anymore. And yes. so that transformation really happened from working with you and meeting other white bodied individuals as well, so mm -hmm. that I wasn't mm -hmm. so isolated and so that I can continue to unlearn imperfectly mm -hmm. and just continue to see how I can yes. show up in alignment and in right relationship. I'm not perfect and I'm not a good white person. Mm -hmm. It's a journey, it's a journey. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to say that because that's really, it's really potent for me personally. And it's also connected to the work that I do with people and it's, it's I'm passionate about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yes. Thank you for those examples, Lee. And I think it's so, there is, you know, we're, we're sharing verbally, right? But there's also an energy. And this is why I, um, you know, say like spiritual empathic people, because then there's that felt sense. There's that energy, right? There's something that you feel in your body that you attune to when someone is doing this work, right? Like, it's not just like someone identifies as doing decolonial work, because also there are people that are saying they're doing decolonial work, and they're not showing up in that embodiment, right? Mm -hmm. So we, the people that really are truly have done this work, can feel into someone that is on the journey, that is continually doing the unlearning, that has done the work themselves, right? And so one of the comments here that someone said was, um, I feel small around white healers. There is a very intimidating energy that they impose. And I think that's, that's really, you know, what we're speaking of. That's part of the colonial capitalist patriarchal conditioning right that that a lot of that is normalized again that is seen as this is the way to to do work right um therapists are encouraged to show up in this way spiritual practitioners are trained to show up in this way right so so there there is a misalignment of healing work and spiritual work and then how the practitioner shows up right that's what we're speaking about and so that when, when you do the decolonial work yourself and, and you continue to be devoted and committed to that, like, we're, I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. Like, we're still human. We're still living in these systems, right? Yeah. And anytime you do healing work, there will be some harm. That's just a part of it, right? Um, and, and there will be mismatch sometimes. Like, all of this is, is a part of it. Um, but there is a felt sense right there is a different energy that people carry and that's why I called this clearing colonial imprints because it really is for me like a limpia of like you do the unlearning from the mind but also somatically energetically clearing those colonial imprints 
so that you can show up in integrity in right relationship and so that you yourself can be well and heal right and and i love what you said like i just can't do that anymore like i just can't live in that way anymore you know i think that's what we all want right like that's why so many people are suffering that's why so many people are feeling depressed or anxious or disconnected right because we've been taught to unconsciously uphold a paradigm that harms us all right even white people that carry privilege and more power have been harmed too and so really calling you in to do this work um the last piece that i think i i wanted to illuminate because a, a lot of people think that i've done my anti racism work so i'm i'm done that's it right and so i wonder if there's something that you'd like to add about like how this work is different than anti racism work like white bodied people that have begun that journey maybe what would you say to them how this is different how how are you able to show up in a more embodied way hmm. um That's a great question. So I I love the question and I I was immediately going to respond um about being in my body and mm. present. And so how? I mean, I think it's um it's a it's, it's slowing down is such a big part of it. Slowing mm -hmm. down and not going so fast throughout every experience. Mm -hmm. um, being connected to my presence, staying connected to my body, staying yeah. connected to my heart, um, regulating my nervous system on a regular basis, um, creating space around myself. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think it's different than anti-racism work for me because of the way you showed up in the space in your body connected to earth medicine mm -hmm. heart medicine mm -hmm. the gentleness the slowness the lack of rigidity yet the potency and depth and fierceness of the work that's so important mm -hmm. so there's a lot of like holding both there's a lot of being in my body and being in my body has taken me you know quite a long time to come yeah. back into my body so i mm -hmm. say it and i've said it probably a lot embodied 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 body but um for me i had to work through a lot of um pain mm -hmm. um so so i i share that because i don't want to bypass that 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 might be difficult and that also might be um something that could be bring up fear for people yes and fear is not fear can be um can be met fear can be greeted and explored you know and sometimes we need the support of a relational um healing um with others you know sometimes we can do it alone sometimes we can't um and some of the other things i wanted to reflect that you mentioned um the shame and guilt you know learning how to get into relationship with those parts of us because if we if we reject that or let it block us then we might not engage in this work we might not be able to engage deeper into ourselves mm. to be of service at least this is my this is how i start to see it but it took me yes. a long time to get to this place mm -hmm. um so that would be that would be my answer i also notice i have like an inner judging part of me that that mm -hmm. you know is judging me like this isn't a good enough answer so i can mm -hmm. be real about that and yeah offer myself compassion in the moment and mm -hmm. i don't be perfect but that's that's what's true for me you yes. know the, those parts body mm -hmm. body and heart and and earth medicine just being connected to the earth yes. it's, it's something that i learned from you and it can yeah. open up it continues to open up for me. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, thank you for that, Lee. I I love what you said of like being in your body, you know? And and it like integrating, being able to integrate 
all the, the teachings and the healing. Because I think, you know, I want to say again, I don't want my words to be weaponized, that anti-racism work is so important and so necessary. And I personally don't work with white people that haven't done that work because you need to do that work to be able to receive this, this healing and this depth of unlearning. And so I want to say that. I also see some chat, uh, some chats here, and I know there's like a side conversation happening, but I want to call in people to the conversation that we're, happy, we're having here. Um, and if you'd like to connect out of here, I want to invite you into that. Um, but really, I love what you, going back to what you shared, is that it's, it's not just doing the work at the level of the mind, right? Um, and not that that's not important, but really your whole being, right? Like not fragmenting yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like bringing your full self in connection to the cosmos, in connection to the earth. And so um, it really feels like, like holistic learning and learning and holistic healing that happens. And I also love what you shared of like, this is, this, this is like the shadow work, right? Like this is part of the deeper shadow work of like the people that, that show up for this work. You have to be able to hold the difficult truths, right? Like I think that in this version of this uh, offering, I speak more to the healing, but there's also the difficult truths that white bodied people need to receive to be able to dismantle. And I share that in, in compassion and also in fierce truth. And what I'm hearing when you're saying is that this is not spiritually bypassing, right? Like, um, and I want to name John Wellwood who coined this term, spiritual bypassing, because we see it a lot in, in spirit, white spiritual communities, you know? of like, let's, let's just talk about the love and light. Let's just talk about like the positive of, of the healing, right? Like what the, the beautiful stuff that you get from the healing, which is all true. And also there is like the, the, the difficulty, right? Like the pain, that that we need to experience as humans to be able to heal right like suffering is a part of our experience um and certainly we're not meant to stay there but really embracing the light as much as the dark you know and so that's what i'm hearing when when you're speaking is like this this is work that you know it, it's what i in my words the work of the underworld right like the work of descending not just ascending it's the work of descending to be able to fully integrate yourself as a human connected to the cosmos connected to the earth mm -hmm. and so really bringing that that fullness um um yeah, I, I want, I wonder, like, there's one last piece, um, if, if you have some space for that, because um, I'm hearing it coming through of like, this piece of spiritual bypassing, right? Like, and what you would say to the white spiritual healers, practitioners, guides, that say, you know, it is divisive to talk about race. It is divisive to, you know, decolonizing work is divisive. What would you say to them? Um, of, you know, when you hear them say that, what, what are some things that you would say to them? Hmm. Um, I think what comes is, you know, with, with those statements that you share as examples, I hear a pushing away something away in the, the, in the energy of those statements and you know the the shadow like diving into the shadow or mm -hmm. uh, an uncomfortable truth that we're holding and it's mm -hmm. just causing a lot of suffering can can truly liberate us if we're willing to look yes. and I think that 
what resonates the most from what what you asked me again is that that what i heard in those statements is really like pushing something away mm -hmm. and i think that that is a spot where being curious okay. why why do we want to push something away why are we judging it mm -hmm. um, is there something there um yeah. and then i also think moderation is so important you know mm -hmm. and that that aligns with the slowness but this is, it is, it is, um, life is suffering and there is suffering and it's painful to look at this. It's sad. It's, it's terrible. I mean, it's, you know, I, I sound, I, I noticed like those are judgy words, but I feel it in my heart. Like I feel a sadness yeah. to address this work. It's, mm -hmm. it's profound. There's liberation and it's also really, it isn't easy. Yeah, um, there's grief in, in yes. all of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that, um, I think that anything that is being pushed away is a great opportunity to explore more. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, and I find that moderation is just so important, you know, in terms of grief, learning how to hold my own grief, learning when it's enough and I need to reach out or when, um, learning moderation for myself in this work. Um, how much can I hold? How much can I do? Yes, balance and harmony. Mm, yeah, and learning my system so that I understand what what it means for me to move out of moderation, out of harmony, and into dysregulation, disharmony, overwhelm, mm -hmm. shame, guilt, whatever it is, that's my themes yes. for me to know, you know, so I think it's like a self knowing. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, where's the divisiveness within, mm -hmm. you know, if, if I'm pointing something out and saying that's divisive, that's divisive, what I want to do is look within mm -hmm. to see like what within me is actually divisive. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the things that come to mind right now. I know it's a it's a really yeah. layered topic. Thank you for that, Lee. Yeah, and and I I so appreciate what you said of like if I'm that that energy of like for me the words that's coming up is dissociation, right? Like and and um why that you know you're you what you're really naming is an invitation, right? This is an invitation to see the divisiveness that already exists, right? Earth Med Medicine Mother named that here, right? Like people that are pointing out race or that are pointing out colonization, patriarchy, capitalism, that we we didn't create, like I'm not that powerful, you know? Like, and that no one, no one person is that powerful to create that divisiveness. This is the divisiveness that already exists in our humanity. And we are at a pivotal time to be able to change that, to be able to shift that, right? And that it does, it serves white people well and all of us well, all of creation, all of humanity for a white bodied person. And this is a sacred responsibility to look within. And as you said, like, what is the divisiveness within? How can I uproot this? How can I alchemize this? How can I clear this? How can I show up in integrity, right? And in, in a world of of trauma, of suffering, of um, so much, you know, of colonization, right? Of oppression. How can I show up in a different way, in an in integrity, in an embodied way, right? So that I can be, you know, in in the in my self and then community be able to restore harmony and balance. And so this is the work, right? Like, yes, we need to do the work in the systems, but also within self, because that is people uphold the systems, you know? And so it needs to be able to start um, within. So thank you so much, Lee, for, for naming that. Thank you for this beautiful conversation. Thank mm -hmm. you for also speaking to the heaviness of this work, you know, of, of, and, and that that's not something we can bypass and that there is fear, um, 
and for me that's part of like the predatory forces right like that that want to stay want us to stay in that fear that manipulate that fear to divide us to keep us asleep to keep us divided right like our, our the fear that we feel naturally as humans then is manipulated right like we're manipulated through that and so just just also honoring that there is fear that there is heaviness that it is, this is shadow work and this is why it's work that you need to experience to be able to get to liberation, to be able to experience the beauty, the healing, that that's not something that, that can be bypassed. And that is also why I show up in deep compassion, in deep honoring and hold it as sacred because I know that there are so many emotions that are experienced and that need to be held tenderly for healing to happen, for liberation to happen. Um, and so I, I saw someone here um, uh, comment, like, I, fi I finally found my group or like, um, and so, yes, I want to say, like, if you are a white bodied person and you see this paradigm, the oppressive paradigm, it hurts you, you know, um, it does create suffering for you. It pains you and you want to be able to do things differently. I want to call you in to this work, I wanna call you in higher. I wanna call you in to be able to show up in embodied ways as Lee and other of my students are doing. Um, and again, it's not that, that any one of us are perfect, but we are doing the work. And I think that you can feel that in, in Lee's energy and the way that she shows up. And not to like place people on pedestals or place myself on a pedestal, but I think that you can see and feel the energy of people that are doing this work and doing, in, doing it in integrity and doing it from a place of heart and really grounded in it. Um, I wanna invite you into this work because we need more white bodied people showing up in this way to create the shift that we need. And so that is your sacred responsibility and I wanna call you in to this work so that you can be a part of this movement and this shift. I wanna again uh, remind you gently that if you are feeling called, today is the last day to join. And so the door is closed today. Um, and it has been two weeks of, of sharing this offering with you. And today is the last day. And so I wanna call you in if you are feeling that um, deeply in your heart and your soul, not because so-and-so is telling you, not because it's popular to do, not because it's, you know, for a certification, you know, although training and apprenticeships are important, but it's because you feel it in your heart and your soul. I want to invite you in um, to remember clearing colonial imprints for a new earth. It is a small container to really be able to hold all of this um, and I also want to say that there's an opportunity for you to, to or self-organize amongst yourselves, you know, after this experience to stay in connection with each other, you know, because I think um, you need support in, in continuing to journey in this work. So for those who are feeling called, link in bio, the doors close today. Um, I also want to invite you in to, to Lee and, and her work. And um, she does work one-on-one, -on -one, as you shared. Um, and I wonder if you'd like to share a little bit more about um, the work that, um, that maybe you are offering now. I know you also offer Akashic Records readings, which I myself have received and, and recommend. So I want to invite you in to share um, about your work, too. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. This conversation has been so wonderful. And thank you for everyone who is here and will yeah. listen. Um, I offer um, weekly honoring sessions, which are a blend of transpersonal energy healing and compassionate inquiry. Um, those are over Zoom. And they really, truly, the way I describe them is honoring your, your heart, your body, and the creative path that your wisdom reveals. So the approaches that I share, and I share, I share them with you, and we relationally explore 
And the way that I see it is that the wisdom that you need is already within you. And it's just relational connection and time and doing the work in the session and in between the session to connect with that wisdom mm -hmm. around whatever you want to transform. And I do Akashic um, record readings. I, I name them as Akashic inquiry and mm -hmm. those are just so beautiful. And I'm really used in an interdependent way. And it's such a great way to connect with, with your non-physical team the non-physical for encouragement and just insights that that sometimes we aren't able to see in our human awareness yes thank you so much for for the space to share what i do i so appreciate it mm -hmm. and thank you lee yeah and and i want to say like i don't do one-on-one -on -one work because I am an unschooling mama. And so I only have like so much time to do my work. Um, and it, it is work that I love. I just don't, in this phase of my life, have the capacity for that. So I do groups um, and, and that is, you know, I do groups and self-paced teachings because that makes space for my motherhood and my, um, my family. And so I'm so grateful for people like you, Lee, that are able to hold that space. And I want to say, like, if you, like, are looking for, like, therapy, you know, and um, and space holding, right? Like, that's what, um, in other words, like the popular words, that's what Lee offers. And in such a beautiful and honoring way um, that that is not prescriptive, <laughs> that is not diagnostic. Mm -hmm. um, and so just thank you for offering that, Lee. And thank you for also offering people an opportunity to connect to to their to the unseen and, and their guides which is what you do through the akashic inquiry that you offer so i want to invite you in to learn more about lee's work um, at heart peace healing which i love um, that and is so um so you and so um, follow her work learn more about her work there if you are feeling called and it feels aligned for you and if you are a white-bodied healer, practitioner, matriarch, spiritual guide that is ready to do the deeper work of decolonizing and healing and then learning, calling you into my link and bio to join for Remember, uh, today is the last day. Thank you all for being here with us for this conversation that feel like so, like we, we got to many layers. So thank you, Lee. Thank you so also much. for you and, and being able to speak to all of these and, and to hold this, um, this, this needed and, and um, intense conversation with me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I honor you. I love you, Lee. I'm grateful for you. And I'm sending so much love to everyone here. Um, and we will see each other again. Thank you so much. I'm loving you. you. And I hope those of you who feel interested um, say yes to the to the remember. And mm. thank you so so much. Mm, thank you, Lee. Adios. Bye bye.